So, uh, hello. My name is on the schedule. Um, no, the uh, my name is Ben, and uh, I'll be teaching. Yeah, hello. Um, so I'll be teaching forecasting today. Thanks for coming out. I was gonna say thanks for coming out so early, but I guess ten o'clock really isn't early. It feels like it is, though. I think you know the nice thing about Iceland is I had the pleasure of teaching at four o'clock my time, so it's not when I normally teach classes. But um, so we're gonna go over some flow passing. And uh, the way that I normally teach, if you haven't been to one of my classes, is I'll show some stuff and then we'll just keep building on it throughout the class. And uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're like doing the moves, there's like a, a, a bunch of different levels in here, right? And, and so I'm not even talking about belt levels. Like there's just people that will understand the techniques a little bit better than other people based on you know, predisposition. And if it happens that you're, you're doing like the next thing and you're having trouble, maybe don't do it. Right? Maybe, maybe do like the setup or do the entry or do whatever we did before in the build up to there. And it's more important that you build, I think, like solid foundations and like how you understand the technique. Then you do like, you know, 90 different things. And then you leave here and you don't understand what we went over for an hour. It's just a waste of your time. And I'd rather not do that. So um, instead, we're going to kind of just talk about the position in general, maybe. And then some stuff you can do. And hopefully, Again, instead of, well, luckily they videotape it, right? So if, whenever you get home, yeah, like, to give a shout out to the camera, I'll break the fourth wall for a minute. <laughs> Deadpool is really successful at that, so I'll try to, you know, piggyback on that. But uh, no, so, so the, the idea then is, is that you can maybe watch the videos later on, see these concepts, and then drill them. Uh, one other idea, if you watch me during maybe some of the open mats or if you grapple with me, you'll notice that everybody that I, I grapple with, I'm going to go for like the same stuff. And every camp, it's a little bit different, and I'll work different things. And I'm a big believer in just doing things until they work. And so regardless of who I grapple with, I'll do different things. And so we'll kind of talk about uh, how to do that with flow passing, how to become better at it. Because I think specifically with flow passing, one of the biggest problems is it's very feel-based. Like you have to understand the movement of the position. And the only way to get better at that is to just do it, right? If you don't, if you don't practice it a bunch, then it's not going to be there. Uh, and then I'll, hopefully I'll do a good job of kind of tying it into other types of passing so that you can see maybe how you can use this to set up passes you feel more comfortable with. And then as a last idea on that before we get started, if I'm really comfortable with, I don't know, I'll give you an example, like I'm really comfortable with like the shin slide. M most people are, that's a pretty common pass in jiu-jitsu now. And so if I'm really comfortable with that position, has anybody ever thought they were good at the shin slide and then you, like a knee slide, and then you, you do it against somebody who's like pretty good and then you just can't pass their guard or you spend like a whole, you know, six minute open mat round trying to pass somebody's guard while they just look at you? And you're like, Cool, I suck at guard passing. Okay, back back to square one. Right? A lot of times it's not that you're bad at the move, it's that if you're only doing one thing, it's easy for the person to kind of read that and then only do one defense, right? So it's not it's not really challenging if you only have one or two things. But if you're good at something and I can make you defend something else and give me back what I'm good at, then I become immediately better at that move. So even if we don't, you know, even if you don't become, you know, a boss at float passing, like my class may have misled you to believe you'd be after this hour, uh, the class title. But you guys voted on it, so I don't feel super bad about having that title. The, the idea would be is that even if you can start doing this, it's going to lead you into some of your other passing. All right. So, uh, thanks, Jared. Sure. Eric accepts me for how fat I am, so I don't feel bad doing passing. But actually, wait here. We're both fat. Yeah. But you're going to be on bottom, so it's not as bad. So you have to deal with your own fats. So uh, the first kind of uh, idea that I want to talk about then is uh, just the idea that a lot of times, especially when we're looking at like pass entries, and uh, we'll talk, maybe talk about this a little bit closer to the end. Um, generally speaking, I don't want my head past my opponent's belt line unless I've cleared his hips. So uh, if you start doing stuff like that, if I was in like spider guard and then I started going over my opponent's belt line, this would end probably catastrophically most of the time against most people that are any good at that. Or, you know, daily Eva maybe is kind of the same way. And so... There's like a few general rules of, you know, maybe guard passing that most people follow. And float passing doesn't follow any of them. So um, we're going to skip through some of that and we're just going to get to a movement drill that will help you understand part of the idea. One other thing that you're going to have to get a little comfortable with is putting your hands on the mat. And so if you've trained jiu-jitsu more than like a day, you've probably been yelled at a bunch about putting your hands on the mat. I will not be doing that. There's a big difference though between putting your hand on the mat here in closed guard Right? And then I put my hand on the mat like out here to stop myself from going over where he now has access uh, to my hand in a, in a good position. 
and, and we'll kind of talk about this idea why this is better than what we're going to be doing for him, why this is better than what we're doing, versus having my hands where I'm going to have him in the flow pass position, which is actually past my partner's head. So if I'm going to put my hands on the mat, I'm going to be so far wide that for my partner to attack my arm position, he has to take his arms and pull them away from where they should be, which is defending my hips from coming towards his core. Um, which then kind of leads me to the last point before we get to this drill. All of my passing is kind of predicated on this idea that I want to start putting parts of my body between uh, what I say, like nipples to knees. So I have this space here that I want to control. And your job is to put different things in the way. And one of the things your partner is going to do a lot, and we'll kind of hit on this, is even laying on their side, start closing off an entire avenue to one side. So if I'm only trying to pass this way, he can lay on his side, and that whole section of his body is now guarded by the mat. And it's very unlikely that I'm going to burrow under the mat and, you know, attack my opponent. So he can rest pretty safe. But if he can stay on this side and I'm only passing to this side, it is almost impossible for me to secure guard mats. Now i got to try to get your legs away from your body, and that's kind of a pain in the ass most of the time. i got to try to pull at your arms. And this is kind of the, the problem with the knee slide, I think, is that, you know, most people have been in it more than once, and then you start to do it, and then they, they get their knee in front of the knee shield, and they lay on their side. And, and you, you may have seen me during some of the grappling matches yesterday. I'll literally just lay here and just like use my hand. And if you can't flatten me out, the pass will never happen. Like, I don't even, it, it, it's kind of actually ridiculous how, how hard this position is to pass for how often people get it. Um, but we'll kind of try to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a double butterfly here. And, uh, oh, you can wait. Like, yeah, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk forward and I'm going to put my hips over my partner's hips. So generally speaking, my belt line should be at least at their belt line. Now, that's like a rough indicator. If you're wearing your belt like really high for some ridiculous reason, then maybe that's not true for you, okay? But uh, maybe I should use a better marker. But generally, I want to have at least my eyes over their eyes or my weight over them, right? So I'm, I'm floating on them. So I thought that would be self-explanatory until I taught that at my gym. And uh, I think some of the people in Colorado don't know what floating means. but. So I want to be completely over, and they're carrying my weight, right? So I'm not posting on the mat necessarily, but my hands will be on the mat, and they're not carrying my weight. So I'm not handstanding. I'm just, I just have them up there for balance in the post if I start going side to side. So we're here. I'm just going to walk up. And now I'm just kind of hanging out, right? So this is a little ridiculous. This, this is not what most people would consider a good passing posture. Maybe we'll kind of dispel that a little bit. It's not bad, but it's not super good either. Um, so I'm going to get nice and high, and then I'm going to use my hips to just kind of feel the position and roll his legs from side to side. So we're here. I'm just nice and relaxed. I'm going to bring up one of my legs, right? Actually, just when you get here, just move around a little bit and just feel the position. Bring one of your knees up close to the knee line and across. So we're here. I'm going to bring my knee up, and I can just start floating to the side a little bit. So I'm using this push to get a little bit of feedback and then start to turn. Sometimes when you do it, if you're a little bit bigger than your partner or a lot bigger than your partner, it'll collapse their legs to the side. That's also fine. We're gonna, we're gonna be doing quite a bit of that today, just using this to fold them to one side. The opposite side you're passing to, so it's a little different than the, the knee slide sometimes, okay? Uh, and then if I went the other way, I'd have a folding pass. So, um, but what I'm basically doing is, is I'm using the motion of my body. I'm just kind of feeling where there's a little bit of resistance. I'm gonna cage his hips with my knees, and then I'm gonna drive that knee across the body and my other leg up. So I'll do it to the other side so you can see what my other leg's doing. So once I get my knee up, my opposite leg is like kicking towards the ceiling, like straight up and back, and that starts to turn my hips. Right, and this will fold him up. Even if it didn't, even if he resisted 100%, it puts our hips at neutral and he can't, he can't use the mat to defend him anymore. This isn't specifically like a technique, but it is a good little bit of a warm-up drill to kind of learn the balance. So one more time. So I'm here. So I just get up really high. I kick a side, right? Maybe it's this side. Maybe it's this side. It doesn't matter. I bring my knee up to their knee line or their hip line. And then from here, I kick. I kick straight up, and I turn slightly across their body. And you notice that I have hip-to-hip -hip contact, right? And then I can just roll through the other side. All right, get your partner.
So, yeah. So again, if, if that's a little confusing, great. We're going to keep working on it, and uh, basically the whole rest of the class is going to build on that motion. So, so you're going to get 40 more minutes of reps on that movement, and uh, hopefully by the end it'll make a little more sense. In the beginning, that, that drill is actually intentionally a little more difficult than the passes itself. And uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about later, one of the lectures, is like how to train to get you know better at jiu-jitsu. That's kind of what both of my lectures are about, just in two different directions. Uh, and one of the things, so and, and I, don't, I don't mean this negatively when I say this. Somebody asked me like a what if question. Well, like what if your partner does this? And that, that's good. Like think about those kind of things. The, the problem with jiu-jitsu is there's always like a what if, right? It's like, what if my partner does this? What if my partner does that? And so some of that we'll address at the end about kind of like the logic of this style of passing. Um, but one of the things I'm always looking for is elbow drift. So anything that requires my partner's elbows to leave their sides, that's really good for me. Because I just we just talked about how in the end, I want to get your, your knee away from your body or your elbow away from your body. In general, <clears throat> when I'm passing, right, I either want to get your legs together or really far apart or really straight out or really to one side. And any of these extremes I can pass into very easily. The problem is when you go with, if you guys have grappled Bjarni or, or somebody like that, he's, he's very good at staying in these neutral positions and it becomes problematic to draw him out of there, right? And that's, that's what we're kind of working on today is, is like, how do I draw somebody up? But that's also true with their arms. If their arms leave that space, this is what starts giving you the high passes, like, well, like floating, some of the floating passes or some of the back step passes, like long step passing. Is because they've opened this space up where my hips can fit in, even if I don't pass their legs, because they're no longer defending <clears throat> higher up their body. So, uh, yeah. So in general, when you're on bottom, really watch that elbow drift. If you want to see why, grapple with me later. That's probably one of the, the things I, I really look for all the time is to get your elbows to leave your body so I can control the position. Um, anyway, so... We're gonna talk about the next big idea and then we're gonna really talk about some entries for the rest of class and, and about like how this connects to the rest of grappling. And uh, this is like the classic float position. I'll show it on both sides. I'm gonna to pass to the right side today um, just because most of you guys are sitting on this side and it'll make a little more sense. I'm going to assume that, that and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to assume that most of you guys know how to hold side control. If you don't, uh, do enough passes and you'll figure it out. The issue is not normally holding side control. It's, I guess for most people, it's even getting past the legs to begin with to even start holding side control. So that's what we're focusing on today. That'd be a, you know, a whole different road to go down. Um, but so for this idea to, to kind of work against most people, I'm going to want two things. And I'm going to want a leg staple on one side and a butterfly hook on the other. And uh, it doesn't matter which side. I'll just switch it if I was going to pass to the other side. So I'll show it on both sides. Uh, once, just kind of the position, and then we'll talk about it. So first, I'm going to show it on the left side with my leg staple, and then I'm going to leg staple to the other side and um, kind of talk about some of the passing ideas. So <clears throat> anyway, we get to here, and we're just going to teleport kind of into this position for right now and not talk about how we get here. And I want to sit on this leg, and my other <clears throat> foot on the outside is going to be active on the mat the whole time. This is, if you roll with people that are good at leg locks, this is insanely important that you do not let his leg pass through this hole and then come up into like single leg X or some other positions. So my foot stays flexed forward all the time and it's hooking <clears throat> here behind his knee, right? So <clears throat> here's kind of another concept I think is really important. If I wanna control his hip, Generally, generally speaking, if I want to control his hip, I will control <clears throat> almost to the next joint. So the closer I get to pinning this knee to the mat, the more I control his hips from rotating the other way. If I want to control your, your shoulders from turning side to side, if I can control behind your elbow, it's that elbow drift idea, right? If I can control behind your elbow, then now it's very hard for you to turn either direction, right? And as a matter of fact, if I just pushed here to kind of show this turn towards me, this is very hard now for him to close that space off because I have a post here that's stopping his body from turning. And even though I'm not directly controlling his shoulders, I'm not pulling here. In fact, this is so much smaller of a lever to try to attack at the shoulder that for a lot of people, the, the other person will just turn into you and then pummel and then you lose position all the time. But if I control here, this gives me a huge lever advantage. So the same is true with the leg. So whenever I, I bicep the leg here with my staple, I wanna be kind of as close to the end of your hamstring as possible and then sitting on the other leg. 
And then there's kind of two major leg positions. The leg can either be across my body here, right? So it's going across, pointed, so that both of his legs are pointed towards one of my legs. Or what's a lot more likely, most people do not like to stay like this. If you watch maybe like Kyotera and his, the way that he does guard, he'll do this sometimes. But I, I don't know a lot of black belts that play guard like this. Okay, So if any of you guys do, please come do this to me. We'll, we'll talk about this pass later, though. You just don't see it very much. And then the other one is that they'll attempt to stay here so that their hips are more open and they have more space to go side to side. You see fundamentally with what we were talking about before, if his legs are both facing one way, we're kind of trending towards one of the passing positions anyway we were already talking about. So this generally starts to worry people on facing to one side, but it does give the turtle up by passing. That's, I think, my Thursday class. So um, we're here. And I'm gonna sit on this foot, so again, if I want to start controlling the extension of your of your knee, I want to sit close to the bottom of your foot to start with, if, or close to the bottom of your shin, rather. If I sit really high on your knee, then your leg can start shooting through. You have more ability to move me. This can be kind of problematic, especially uh, for somebody like Natalie, who you know competes at like 105, and then a lot of her training partners are 200 pound people. You know, she if she sits up here, then she's going to get reversed, and then if she sits on the foot, the only way for the person to really kind of you know, pressure me, like, like kick your leg straight. Well, we talked about this, right? If the leg goes straight, he's no longer defending the pass. And this is like a, a good thing. Most people won't do this. This is not a wise idea to stop the pass. And again, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as one of the finishes or entries in a minute. So I'm stepping by the knee, I'm sitting here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk my way forward. And what I want, again, is to be forward enough that I'm pinning his knee to his body and that my weight is starting to be carried by my opponent. And if I can keep this leg staple, that's great. But at the very least, I need to keep his leg from coming through. All right, so I'm using my far leg to stop his hips from being able to, to like kind of be flexible. And then my foot on that far leg is stopping his leg from coming through. So we're here and I walk up. And now you notice, I only have one leg trapped. So right away, I'm gonna block the hip with that leg. And now get your right leg out. So I should just be able to stay here. This is very comfortable. Move around a little bit. And see, I'm just using my hand. And we'll talk about the pass in a second. So we're not going to. So we're not going to spend very long. But I want you to get your partners. And I'm going to show this position again. But when I tell you guys to break, we're going to. You're going to get your partners, and we're going to kind of just play around in this position. So we're going to spend like one or two minutes. Just you trying to move your partner around while they balance and use their hands kind of high. And then uh, maybe do it off both sides, see the side you feel comfortable on. Switch top and bottom a few times. So off the other side. You're gonna sit. <coughs> if the leg comes across, that's fine. If it stays here, that's fine. Foot to the back of the knee. My weight's kind of high. My feet are not necessarily on the mat. If any of them are on the mat, it's my one that's trapping his leg uh, here with the staple. All right, my partner can kind of move around a little bit. And then we'll talk about how to pass all the stuff he's doing. All right? So uh, let's get your partners. All right. So that looks a lot better than, than the last girl. Um, yeah, so you're starting to get it. And uh, we'll talk about grips. So when I do this live, sometimes I won't put my hands on the mat and kind of be funny, but, but the, the real point actually is I'm gonna get my grips before I pass, and we'll kind of talk about that towards the end. Uh, like, like I said, the biggest thing, if, I mean, this is all being captured on video, right? So if, when we talk about some of the entries and some of the grips, you can play with that a lot more. You don't need as much drilling time. If you understand the kind of the, the idea behind the position before you leave here, you can watch the video and then be like, oh yeah, I should do this key detail or something. Uh, it's not as big of a deal to see off the video, but kind of feeling the position correctly is uh, more important. So the next thing we're going to do is, I think, the most important version of this pass, and then it's it's not the back step like we were doing, and then this one sets up a lot of the other passing structure that we'll kind of work on if you get kind of a lot more advanced at this position. Um, so I'm going to do this one. Uh, where my staple's on the far side, and you'll see why kind of quickly. So we have the staple, we have the butterfly hook, I'm sitting, 
and I start to bring my, my knee up nice and high. Now from here, I can windshield wipe and hook my partner's foot. The reason I'm saying bring your knee up high is watch. This, I'm almost never gonna hook somebody's foot from here. Especially if they're smaller than me, this is never gonna happen. But once I get this knee up kinda high, this is no problem now. And so what I'm gonna do when I end up here is I'm hooking his ankle with my ankle and I'm turning his knee across by turning my foot out and bringing my knee in. And so now I have a lever on his ankle and a lever on his knee. And this forces this butterfly hook to be straight. And this is really going down a different rabbit hole that I don't want to go down today. But you lose the ability to hold on to things meaningfully, like reverse daily diva and things like that, when your knee is straight in line with your body. Because your leg is no longer able to bicep my leg and hold on to it. So this takes away a lot of my partner's kind of guard ability the second I can have them flat with their knees up. All right, like straight up and down with their body. So being that this is the only leg kind of holding me in guard because I'm stapling the other one, this butterfly hook is what I have to start addressing. All right. So we're here. I get my staple. My knee comes up nice and high and I windshield wipe. The second I get here, I get his leg straight. Now, the easiest version of this pass that works almost all the time if you just try it is I just push it through. So why would I pass to side control if I could pass straight to mount, right? Usually in defending the mount, they'll give me side control and be okay with that. And now instead of fighting side control all crazy to regard, they're like, oh, you only got side control. Your pass to mount almost worked. Cool, bro. I got past your guard, that's all I really care about, right? So I'm indifferent to which guard, which guard position I end up in or which position past the guard I end up in. So I'm gonna go for the kind of the big one first. And incidentally, in this position, the, the big one to the mount is, is by far the easier of uh, And in defending that, he's gonna give up the other ones and we'll talk about that next. But we're here, I get the, I get the leg staple, I pin the leg here, I walk up, I make sure my foot's in the hamstring, stopping the knee from being able to move around. I bring my knee up. Here's another side note, actually. If I'm back here, can I really bring my knee up high? It's much more difficult, right? My own body is stopping my knee from coming up high. So for me to get up here and kind of do some of these things, I need to be high. Anyway, so we're here. Walk, 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 walk. Get my knee up high, windshield wipe. Once I get here, look, I'm using this to pull his leg straight and he kind of loses meaningful control over my body. And I pull. See, his foot's a step, right? Pull your foot out. Mm. Right. So this is the idea. I capture his foot with my foot and I use my knee and foot position to pull his leg through. And this gives me a mount. One more time real quick. Pull, up. pull. capture the leg. Now. All right, let's get your partners. Alrighty, so we're going to talk about, um, just for sake of time, we're going to talk about uh, two more finishes, that's it, uh, actually I, I was you, three more finishes, that's it, but we're going to do a different entry for each one, all right? And uh, you don't have to do these entries. If you kind of struggle with some of these, you don't have to um, play around specifically in these positions. But uh, if you want to kind of practice some of the entries, you're more than welcome to kind of see. But it's also one, so it gets captured on video so you can watch it later. And then two, so you can start to at least think about it this way. First entry, um, let's talk about his daily eating. So, so we're here, he has his foot on my hip, right? So I'm gonna reach across, pin the, pin the key, back steps, over. Now, this position should look familiar, okay? So, one of my one of my students was competing recently, and the guy goes to Daily Eva and then pummels this foot on the inside right away. Yeah, so, that's great. You might have a lot of stuff you think you can do from here, and that's great. Until the person sits on you. Okay. Now this is a little bit problematic, especially in the gi where most people do Daily Eva. I'm just gonna grab your gi and start to row you in until I take away your ability to push me. So if you ever end up here, Right, I'm just gonna start walking in. Let's turn. I'm gonna grab onto your gi and I'm gonna sit on you here. That's kind of awful, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm in my float pass position already, right? So I'm, I'm ready to go. One side note, just from Daily Diva, 
You see where his left arm is? You see what it's not doing any longer? It is incapable of stopping me from passing. It is stuck under his leg. So, if you want to talk more about that, maybe catch me at an open mat. But that, that becomes a very bad position to be stuck in. For somebody that's kind of good at passing to either side, this is, this is not what you want. All right, is having your hand stuck underneath your leg. If this starts to happen, you need to get your arm out of there somewhat soon. So this leads me to my next point then. So before we talk about what happens if the leg is across. So we're here and you can practice these. You don't have to get the grip. You don't have to do the entry. You can just practice some of the finishes, but if you can add some of these details in, they really help. So on the side that my leg staples on, generally, I can do it to either side depending on what pass I'm gonna do. But generally on the side that my leg staples on, I wanna get the underhook. This is convenient because as I start to pressure in, a lot of times my partner will start, you know, pummeling with me, pushing on me, and will give me the ability to get one underhook. If he's just hanging out here doing nothing with his arms, this is already problematic for him. So when I'm here and I'm kind of pushing and I'm, I'm pulling, I'll get my hand to the mat. And as long as I can get my elbow under his elbow, I can start controlling this position. And this becomes the idea. So pummel your arm back in. Why can't you? I can't get my elbow underneath you. So you notice that when, I, when I'm doing this, I'm not bringing my elbow close to his body. I'm leaving it out as a little bit of a post. And then I'm gonna put my head on that side to create like a triangle between my head grip, my elbow grip, and my head. All right? So now I cannot be swept this way very easily. So we're here and I'm controlling. Now when I get to this position, I can control no problem. But I might get here and I'm having trouble catching. Hmm. So I just do the back step pass that we learned. All right, so that's then pass finish number two with an alternative grip. I already have the underhook. I would always hesitate to pass unless you're really good at re-catching the other side when they turtle, passing without the underhook on the far side. So whatever side you plan on passing to, bite the underhook. Even if it's kind of a shallow underhook or even if it's just pinning their gi to the mat. Here, if you're doing uh, gi jiu-jitsu, right? Or some of you that are wearing no gi, then maybe don't grab on your partner's skin and try to pin it to the mat. But, but here, right, I can still do this. So, so we're here, daily heva, I step, I start to roll myself in a little bit and I, I eat this space up. Now, as I start to go, yeah, if my partner starts to pummel with me at all, I, I, this is already very hard for my partner to hold position and he gave me kind of a folding pass. But from here, look, easy money. Uh, let me do it. Can I, can I use you, Tom? Just Tom's a little more flexible. Than me. Yeah. <laughs> this is, if you put your head down in this position, which is why I don't practice this to begin with, it is very straining on your partner's hips, right? Carrying your weight there is, is kind of awkward. So a lot of people will not be able to keep their knee to the outside unless they, you know, a little more flexible or done jujitsu for a long time hanging out in open guard. So it's, it's kind of difficult. So we're here. I stop them from sitting up. I sit. I start to climb. Now as I'm fighting here, I get my underhook. And I start to get nice and high. This is kind of hard to hold on, right? Yeah. You see how his other leg is drifting up? We're gonna talk about that next. But if I can get to this position, easy. If I'm trying to get to this position and then I kind of can't finish it, I'll pass it to the other side. Does that make sense? All right, get your partner. Okay, so kind of then to move around a little bit in the last 10 minutes. We won't spend a lot of time on each one of these, but just practice them a few times so you got kind of the idea and I'll be watching you. So I'm in the knee shield. I'm trying to do my knee cut passing here and shoot slide, whatever. And I, ideally, I would practice his knee with my toes magically and stop the thing with the But I get to here, right? And if I could ever windshield wipe and pull this foot out, this is, this stops like the reverse daily diva and a bunch of other stuff. And there's a lot of good passing from this position, you know, where I can start pinning his knee down and going over the top and stuff. Well, that's fine. And, and if you're good at the knee slide, if you can get this foot out, this is, this is money here. This is actually kind of hard to do though, especially if the person already has reverse knee diva. So, so we're here and I'm trying to even get to a good knee slide position and this can be somewhat problematic. So I'm gonna take my hand that would be in the underhook position and I'm gonna grab either onto his pants or if you're kind of good with frames, or posts rather, you can grab on the lapel, but here and on the knee. And I'm just gonna walk. 
Now, if my partner goes all the way to the side, we'll do a folding pass, and, and that will be the last pass we covered in a second. But a lot of times we'll end up here, right? So we ended up here, and then now I can just kind of walk up and windshield wipe. Now watch. If I get to here, a lot of times my partner won't want to get mounted. You notice, just to be nice to my partner, you don't have to do this, but just to be kind of nice, I'm not sitting as far forward as I normally do because it's giving a little more space where you can kind of see. Otherwise, it's very hard for him to defend if I'm already kind of high. But in order to stop this, a lot of times, my partner will start creating pressure here, either trying to push my leg out of the staple by pushing it to the middle or by getting his knee off the mat. And this creates a little bit of a problem because if I can't keep that staple, then my partner has some entries into positions I kind of don't want to be in. So we're here, I have my windshield white, I'm trying to get this across, but he's kind of pushing me back to the other side. Here we are. So I've done two things. I've cleared the far knee, so I'm no longer a knee shield, and I've cleared his reverse daily heva hook. Now I can do my pass, right? So I can hit whatever knee slide pass I want to start working, next pass or whatever, I got my grip. So if I wanted the knee slide originally, I'm back to it. All I had to do was threaten the floating pass, and I'm back to the pass I wanted to do. I don't even have to be good at the floating pass, he doesn't know. Once I get that foot over the top and hook his leg, he loses his reverse daily heva hook, and I go back to the same side. That's all I'm doing. And if he doesn't respect that, then I'll easily mount him, just like we talked about, right? So kind of, you can see it from the other side. So, uh, from here, keep the reverse of Eva. Try to pass and test. See this? Uh, this is getting problematic. My partner has a good position. I don't want this to happen. So I grab the pant leg, or I pull at the knee, push at the arm, whatever I want to do, right? I want to create more space to flatten up. Walk it back up. Center line of the body. I sit. Most people are not going to let me take them all the way over, so we get stuck here for a second. Now, I start to walk up, I get my foot. He doesn't want to leave this foot on the mat over here because if he does, I will immediately pass him out or a back step. So he starts to push it across, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my foot across, and look, all I'm doing is windshield wiper. I windshield wiper this one in, and I'm windshield wipering this one across. Now my cross leg is bisecting his other side. And I just hold it easily. It's like the insanely slow way of doing it. You wouldn't want to do it that slow in real life, right? But, but you get kind of the idea. So I'm pulling one leg in, and I'm switching the side to the other leg. And now I'm back in my knee slide. I've cleared this because my staple was over it, so it's easy to clear. And his reverse daily keep up with this one. And now I'm back in my knee slide. And this, if you can't do this, you probably shouldn't do the knee slide in the beginning. So, so this position, easy pass. All right, it's hard. Bring it back in. So I just want to talk about kind of the last piece to pull some of this together. Um, and there's a lot of details to, you know, knee slide passing that we didn't cover, obviously. And there's a lot of details to this next pass we're not going to cover at all. Uh, but I do want to show you just kind of one more entry and one more finish. Let you guys practice for a few minutes and then we'll take a picture real quick and then be done. And then hopefully, you know, catch me during an open mat. Try this out as much as you can and then maybe ask me some questions. So the, the other option might be that I'm in full butterfly. This happens a lot. Um, we're here, and so I gotta, maybe my partner sits up, right? And I gotta get lower grips, and I start to walk in, and I'll get one knee up. And so it looks almost like I'm trying to do the pass to this side, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring my knee across. I'll bring my knee across, and when he's pushing back out, from here I can start to bring my, my, my knee in. And what I wanna do is I wanna point my toes and bring my foot to the inside. And this may take a few tries, but here's the thing. If I start to pin his leg over the top, and I point my toes, it's very hard for him to hook my leg, and then I start to go, all right? Now from here, I have my, my full pass position. Um, and we're good to go. Another option you can kind of work, if you fancy half guard, you don't like passing butterfly, is anytime I end up here, a lot of times when I'm trying to pass, my partner will get the butterfly hook here to start to lift me, all right? And then I can just walk back in, throw in my staple, and I'm, and I'm actually kind of already in really good position to start my passing. So this is a really dangerous spot for my partner if I can get half guard to half guard and they throw the butterfly hook in on the far side. This will give me the float pass almost 100% of the time. It's very hard to stop. All right, but in any case, 
So we get to here, and now instead of having the leg all the way to the far side, my partner brings it to the near side. And all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put my hands on the mat. So I'm not gonna get my full grip. I go here, and I'm gonna knee slide basically to the other side, but trap his leg in the middle. And I don't wanna have my leg through because I don't wanna get caught in a honey hole or a knee bar. So I keep my foot active on the mat, just like a knee slide, and I'm pinning to the other side. And a really easy pass to do from the folding position is I pull his elbow up, drive my knee to his underarm, and I walk him out all the same. So, again, whatever entry you want to do, maybe you're doing it from half guard. Center, you do it from butterfly too. Here, you get a butterfly hook. Gosh, it seems to turn off and lift me up. I feel my legs taking I start to walk up. Now, as I start to square up with him, to start pressuring his hip, he puts it across. I know this is a little bit problematic. I can't reach the wiper anymore as well. So I'm just gonna push forward a little bit. And you slide to the other side, like step in the middle into a folding pass. Pull his elbow. Walk him out. All right, let's get like one, two minutes of just doing that, and we'll cut out. Good work.